Audio Jungle. Hi guys, it's me from Rehab U Movement and Performance Therapy. Welcome to our new segment, Pick My Brain, episode one of our new segment, a uh, segment that we decided to launch. Um, I'm pretty excited about the segment because I do get a lot of questions on social media, uh, some that I can't really answer, but a lot that I can answer, so it'll be nice to share some of the thoughts and answers on the blog. If you do want to ask me a question, uh, send me a direct message, Instagram or Facebook, and I'll do my best to include it in one of the next uh, episodes of the Pick My Brain segment. So, uh, I'm here with Joey Russo from Fast Strong Kinesiology, um, who's going to help me demonstrate some of the exercises that we'll go through uh, within some of the answers we have for you guys' questions on the blog. Um, when I launched the Pick My Brain uh, segment, so I launched it on social media and asked people for questions, the very first question that I got was from Spencer, who said, how can I date you? What should be my max pull up, back squat, and handstand hold time for that? So we said pick my brain, uh, and Spencer heard pick me up. Uh, but Spencer's a super fan, and so we love him. We love you, Spencer, my husband and I. Uh, next question came from Jean-Philippe, who said, I'd be interested in your take on hamstring flexibility, especially in the feeling of restriction we might have in the hip hinge. I'm always excited about hip hinge questions. Uh, because I think the hinge is a fundamental movement. It's one of the fundamental movements that we cover in the Level 1 Movement Optimization course, um, assessing uh, the movement of the hips, assessing the hinge. Um, hamstring flexibility. My uh, first response to Jean-Philippe was, do we need hamstring flexibility or do we need the hamstring to operate more efficiently at a longer length? Um, I think in most cases we need B. Um, if you are getting that feeling of hamstring tightness, so he was saying that feeling of restriction we might have in the hip hinge, to me that means you're doing the hip hinge properly. Um, Mark Rippletoe said it best in his book Starting Strength where he talks about how at the bottom of a deadlift or a hinge um, there's a war going on between your hamstrings that are trying that are pulling your pelvis posteriorly and your lumbar extensors that are post pulling sorry your pelvis anteriorly and your low, lower back has to win that war um, and if you tilt tilt the pelvis anteriorly a little bit you're going to put those hamstrings under tension right so I think that if you're hinging and you're feeling a, a, a tension in the hamstrings, you're doing it right. Um, restriction would be something different, right? So I'm going to use Joey as a model. So when we look at how someone does a hinge movement, what we want to see is that as they hinge the hips back, the pelvis naturally will tilt forward a little bit because to have an appropriate hinge, you need to be able to create that arch in your lumbar spine. If you, you have someone who has a posteriorly tilted pelvis and if they can't reverse that, therefore when they fold forward, their hips stay tucked under, their pelvis stays tucked under, they're not going to get that arch in their lower back. Okay, so that's what I would say would be a restriction potentially in the hamstrings that would prevent them from having an appropriate hinge. And now, so if you look at posture and you look at position of the pelvis, I think that's what people miss sometimes is that the pelvic positioning is going to change your ability to hinge. So people who have a posteriorly tilted pelvis and as such a shorter hamstring are going to start with a different capacity for the hinge than someone who has a neutral pelvis or even an anteriorly tilted pelvis. And remember, when you're hinging, you do need to create that arch. So you do want a little bit of an anterior tilt. You don't want a full anterior tilt but that neutral range is going to require some tilt because you need that arch. You want the low back extensors to win over the hamstrings. So do we need flexibility? Well, potentially if someone has a shorter hamstring, like someone who has a posterior pelvic tilt. When do you use a stretch? I think every time you stretch a muscle, it's because you have a task in mind that will benefit from that stretch. And we know that stretching will provide an immediate result. So if I foam roll, if I do a PNF stretch, um, if I do a static stretch even, I'm gonna get 
I'm going to get a window of opportunity. I'm going to get an immediate neural response that will increase my range of motion and that will increase my tolerance to stress, to stretch. So that feeling of restriction is going to decrease a little bit. Studies, uh, uh, some studies have actually shown that a regimen of static stretching changes position of the pelvis and, and uh, results in greater anterior pelvic tilt something we need if someone is posteriorly tilted, right? So if you do have someone with a posterior pelvic tilt, then you might want, in your mobilization sequence to create space, you might want to stretch the hamstring to get that immediate response. And then it's what you do after, in that window of opportunity, that's going to be important in creating the behavior we want. So if you were going to do a stretch, now Joey could foam roll, he could do whatever he likes, or we could do a PNF stretch. So we could do a hold relax where we bring him into a stretch position and we want to make sure that now he's not, his pelvis is not already tucking under from the pull of the hamstrings. So we take him to where we feel that we have that restriction and we get him to push down for six seconds. And then as he relaxes, I'm going to get that post isometric relaxation that's going to allow me to take the stretch further. And you could do this three times for six seconds contractions. Okay, and every time he relaxes, I take him a little bit further. Okay, so that's hold, relax, PNF. So I can benefit from that post isometric relaxation of the muscle. So then I get that immediate response. And remember how I talked about with a posterior pelvic tilt, it's going to be about being able to bring the pelvis into an anterior tilted position to get a proper hip hinge. So we could even practice that in the activation sequence, for example, with Joey, where we would have him just practice anterior and posterior tilting the pelvis. And now he could do this standing, he could do this kneeling, okay? So just creating that awareness of that anterior tilt. And then to build movement on top of that and build behavior on top of that, and get that hamstring to operate more efficiently at a longer length, then we could use eccentric exercise. So one of the exercises that I like the most, for example, for someone who has a more posteriorly tilted pelvis and needs to focus on tilting it anteriorly, is a staggered hinge. I'm gonna give him a load here, where his focus can be on the back foot, knees extended, and he's got to focus on keeping that anterior tilt and pushing the hips back. And he's going to get a nice stretch here in the hamstring. And we could load that to make it an eccentric exercise. Okay, because we know that our muscles are going to respond to eccentric exercise by improving their length tension. So we're allowing the muscle to operate more efficiently at a longer length, which is what we need and want for the hamstrings in the hip hinge. Okay, so hopefully, uh, Jean-Philippe, that answers your question about uh, my thoughts on hamstring flexibility. Uh, stay tuned for episode two of Pick My Brain.